Hi guys, welcome back to Cupcakes and Protein Shakes. I am your host, Savannah Sharp. Welcome to the episode. Happy Thanksgiving. I wanted to make sure I got this episode in time for you to listen to for your holiday. And I just wanted to tell you guys that I'm so thankful for each and every one of you. If you've listened to an episode, if you've liked it, if you've shared it on your social media, if you've tagged me, if you've tagged a friend, if it has at all impacted you, if you've reached out to me and sent me a sweet message about how it's impacted your life in some way, I love you guys so much. Thank you. Like you, you've really helped, you know, justify that this podcast is doing its job and helping other competitors, um, not make the same mistakes that I, I did. And I'm super excited that you all are still interested in my journey. So I'm grateful and thankful for each and every one of you. And I also want to jump on here and do a quick little <laughs> plug for Black Friday. So Angel Competition Bikinis, which I work for, is still doing Black Friday all week long. You can still, it is not too late to get a suit for 25% off. This is the cheapest time in all of 2022 that you can get a suit. We do not offer discounts on custom suits this high any time of year except for Black Friday. I'll be working on Friday if you guys need any consultations. My link is in the description box of every episode if you ever would like to chat about your suit. I love to help you pick crystals, colors, go over sizing, and different things like that as well. And then I am doing a giveaway with First Form as well. There is the directions in the description box of this episode. So if you are buying any supplements, I do recommend getting some First Form. Um, the giveaway is pretty simple. You just have to purchase any item with my link, which is below any amount. It could be literally $5. It doesn't have to be a high amount. You can buy any product just to try them out and support me and get entered for this giveaway. We're doing a goddess stack. So it's a value of $149 and it's actually focused on like hormonal help for females, which is perfect because as a female who has experienced some hormone issues myself, the goddess stack is something that could help with it. So it has like thyroid drive, it has the goddess um, it has some other supplements, it has greens, it has a bunch of other things that you could try from first form. Um, and then you just have to fill out your order number and your name and email address. And there's all the directions for the description box. And this giveaway is going until December 1st. So you can shop their Black Friday sales and enter that giveaway as well. And um, I also wanted to take this time to kind of talk about um, a harder topic for me, which is this time of year. This time of year is a hard for a lot of families because a lot of people don't have um, families that love them or they might not be able to afford a Thanksgiving meal. And so I'm thinking about each and every one of those people right now. And it's really hard for my family too because this marks um, the time of year. That is the anniversary of my younger sibling's um, death. death. He passed away the Monday after Thanksgiving five years ago, and that was the beginning of my fitness journey was kind of after that happened. So it's always, you know, it's always a time for me to reflect on my life and make sure that I am living every day of life to its fullest because you never know who is not going to be at your Thanksgiving table next year. So I wanted to make this, take this time to like make you guys think and just really just look at who's at your Thanksgiving table this year and just be grateful for those of your family members and friends who are sitting with you at that table. You never know who's not going to be there next year. So just really enjoy your day. Enjoy your day off of work. Don't stress. This is a day to relax. It's a day to eat. It's a day to make memories and have great conversations. It's not a day to focus on food. It's not a day to worry about macros. It's not a day to do anything. It's not a day to worry about the gym or the games or whatever. Like just be grateful and have some fun food and memories and just know that, um, you know, life is hard. <laughs> life is hard. And, um, there's just a lot to be thankful for. Don't ever think that, um, you don't have anything to be grateful for. If you're listening to this, you are lucky to be alive and healthy and if you are competing, especially competing is something to be thankful for. It is a choice. Competing is a luxury. A lot of people do not get the luxury to be able to choose to be hungry. Some people are hungry not by choice. So just remember that when you are on prep and you're dieting hard, it is a choice. And just be thankful that you are healthy enough to get to do it and that you have the funds to be able to provide for yourself. So just humble, humble, humble yourself this time of year and know that I'm thinking about you and your family. Have an amazing holiday and I'm excited for you guys to listen to this episode. This is a 17-year-old um, novice 
competitor who just did her first show. She's going to go over a lot of um, different experiences as far as like how to stay disciplined and um, we go over a lot of hard things too. So I'm excited for you guys to listen to this episode. I hope you have a great holiday and let's listen to this week's episode. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. So we're doing another episode where I have a bikini competitor on and they're going to introduce themselves and we're going to get to know them a little bit better. So can you introduce your name, your age, and where you're from? Hi, my name is Lydia. I'm 17 and I'm from Missouri. Oh, are you really? Where are you located at in Missouri? Uh, Lebanon. So it's like 45 minutes from Springfield. Okay, well, I'm kind of close, so okay, I'm outside of Kansas City, so I'm in Lawrence, Kansas, so that's cool. You're pretty close to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that is cool. You're, like, really close. Um, so with bodybuilding, <laughs> I wanted to know, how did you get started? I know that you recently just did a competition. Mm-hmm. So I started getting into competing when I started Olympic lifting, and I wanted to get my nutrition in check. So I reached out to a coach. I had honestly no intentions of bodybuilding. Um, And she was just doing my diets and everything. And then after I went to nationals for Olympic lifting, she was like, I really think you would do good in this. And I was like, what the heck, why not? So then I started prepping immediately after. Okay, so Olympic lifting is pretty different as far as like the style that you use for training. Um, Was there any similarities between like Olympic lifting and like bodybuilding lifting? Um, not really. No, it's completely different. I Olympic lifted into my prep as long as I could until my calories got so low to the point where I just couldn't anymore. Yeah. Um, But she did let me include it for a while but it's not similar at all. How did she get interested in Olympic lifting? Um, so I, once I started going to the gym, um, the program I bought offline, which was so random, um, it had some cleans in there and I wanted to just, wanted to just learn how to clean better. So I went and talked to the owner of the gym and he teaches Olympic lifting. So I was like, hey, I just want to learn how to clean. And he was like, no, you're going to learn how to clean, jerk, and snatch if you're going to learn. So, and I picked it up pretty fast. Um, My technique was good. So I just kind of went from there. What was your highest lift? Uh, At nationals, I had only been doing it for about six months. And my clean and jerk was 145, so 66 kilos, I believe. Okay. And what is your height and weight comparison wise to that? Um, I'm five, four and a half technically, and I weigh 120 pounds. Okay. So, all right. I see you. I see you. Um, (laughs) How did you first hear about bodybuilding? Because it's such a, like a niche thing. Like what was the first time that maybe you came across it and like, what is this? Yeah, so the first time I probably ever heard about it was when I started working at the gym, which is where I still work now, and I just seen all these, like, big buff dudes, and they were shredded, (laughs) Um, and they were competing for a show, so I kind of started talking to them, you know, getting more info about it, and I was like, oh, I can never do that because the diet's too strict. Um, Little did I know, like, two months later, I would actually compete. (laughs) So do you follow a macro plan or a meal plan? I follow a meal plan. Um, I was doing macros before, um, but once I started prep, it's just a lot easier for me to and just stick to a meal plan. What kind of what kind of things are on your meal plan? Um, so for breakfast, I have eggs, egg whites, um, cream of rice, some sugar free jam, bananas. Then it's pretty it's pretty broish if I'm being honest, like steak and broccoli, chicken and rice. Um, just rice cakes and protein powder, which yeah. I don't mind. I honestly really like it. Yeah, mine's what my I eat the same thing over and over again. I I like the bro diet. I, I I did macros at the beginning of my journey, but I felt like it wasn't. I didn't trust myself. I was like, I can't be eating what I want to be eating. Like it doesn't make sense. I'm like, if I want to get small, like I need to eat healthy things. So I like a meal plan better than macros anyway. Yeah, I feel like I'm just so much more on plan. Like I. If I have a meal plan, I can actually stick to it, and I know I'm getting everything I need. Yeah. So that's why I like meal plans. <laughs> you're you're very young to be in this sport. Like, 
how do you feel about like your age in the sport? Um, I don't think my age, I mean, it does play a lot, and I kind of realized that once I actually got backstage for my show, because they were like, oh, wow, you're 17, and they were like 30s, um, but I don't really think much of it. I think, if anything, it gets me a good foot in the door, because it is something I want to do long term, yeah. um, kind of like Laura Lee, she competed super young, too, so mm -hmm. not that I'm like comparing myself, no. she also started young, so I feel like I have a pretty good start. I'm just curious because when I was 17, I was not, I was, I didn't really care about health and fitness. I was like doing like not, I don't know. It was just, I was in a different place in my life. So I wish that I would have started younger. So I do think it's going to put you in a really yeah. great spot to compete. Um, are you in a bikini or you have plans to stay in this division? Do you want to be in a different division? Uh, no, I, def I think I definitely plan on staying in bikini. Um, I've had some people tell me I have the lats to go and figure, but I think a bikini is definitely my area. Okay. And then what's your, what's your background for like sports? Did you do any sports growing up throughout like high school besides Olympic lifting? Uh, yeah. So I was actually a competitive swimmer, um, since I was 10, I believe up until I was 16 and then COVID hit and I just didn't have time to drive back and forth to Springfield every day basically yeah. that's where but, the last um, come from like that yeah happened. it really is you probably have great shoulders already too I, I I feel like I do I feel like I have good shoulders when I go out in public in a tank top they're like oh you must lift <laughs> yeah so how is it um different like when you first started was there anything surprising about like the diet and exercise protocol when you started training I wish I would have done more research before I started a prep because I did not know what I was getting myself into. There was so many aspects I was unprepared for, and I love my coach. I'm still with her. I love her to death, um, but I was not prepared financially, emotionally, physically. I knew it was going to be hard, and I had known a little bit about it, but I just kind of jumped into it without really thinking twice. Um, the cardio was probably the biggest like I didn't realize I was gonna be on the dang elliptical for an hour and a half almost right. yeah <laughs> it, the end. so I that's one thing too like I didn't I was the same way like I started and I literally did like very minimal research like very minimal it was like yeah I saw a picture on Instagram of like an Olympian at Olympia and was like wow they look really good I want to see what they're doing I want to go to like a show and do it and then I was like okay I don't really understand like how to go pro. I don't understand what nationals is. I didn't know any of that thing. So I was like, Oh, it's just like, you get to get your hair and makeup done and it looks so fun. And they get cookies and treats and like, this looks great. I'm like, do you just get to work out and then you look great. And so that's kind of what I thought it was. And then little to the, you know, you're like, Holy cow, this is like, you're an athlete. Like you're an athlete every single day. And then one day a year you get to, you know, get all glammed up. Yeah, the sport is 100% glamorized. I will tell that to people to this day when they're like, oh, I'm thinking about competing. And I'm not trying to downplay the sport yeah. or anything when I talk about it, but I'm like, you, like, I wish I would have had somebody to tell me straight up about these things because I did go into it with a toxic mindset and I came out a better person because of it, but I don't want anybody to go the same thing, go through the same things I did. Yeah. Um, what kind of research but, would you wish you would have had? Like, what can we tell people here that maybe are thinking about doing a competition that you learn after the fact that you wish you would have like researched beforehand? Yeah. So financially, the biggest thing, suits are so expensive. Luckily, I had got my suit pretty cheap. Like, I don't think anybody has gotten a suit for $40 ever. And wow. my suit is actually pretty blingy. And I, I got really lucky with that. But the show itself is at least a hundred dollars a class. Um, hotels, travel, like all your food that goes into it and everything. Um, I just think it's important to have a good financial base before you even think about prepping. Yeah, I mean, I so if you guys want to, I explicitly broke down one of my preps. I have an episode that I went through and was like, all right, this is what I spent and. Uh, it's a lot like you don't realize mm -hmm. because it's over your prep of like six months to a year, however long that you're doing it. But when you add up coaching fees, training fees, gym fees, meal preps, supplements, 
protein powder, um, getting a water bottle, like like a gallon jug. Yeah. Um, yeah, the hotel, the travel, the tanning, the hair, the makeup, the suits, the jewelry, the robe, the uh, like extra, I mean, laundry that you're doing, the extra time that you're spending. Like it is so many things like financially, it's a lot. Like it's, it's not just it something is. you can just, if you want a diff, like if you want a cheap hobby, like the bodybuilding is not it. Like it is, it is 100% not cheap. You can do it on a budget, but I think if you do it too much on a budget mindset, you might regret it in the end. Um, because there's a lot of athletes that don't have budgets that you will be competing against. If that makes sense, that kind of spare no expenses because they want to, you know, do this long term. I agree. And I feel like if you go about it too cheaply, it kind of can show on stage. Like I didn't, I did my own makeup and the morning show, you could definitely tell. And I fixed it. And luckily that had changed my placing in the end, but Mm -hmm. boy, that was, that was rough. (laughs) I I knew I got an advice. I was like, I have no idea. Like I'm okay at makeup, but I still was like, I don't really know how to put on fake eyelashes. I think it's really hard. So I'm like, Mm -hmm. I'm for sure getting it done. I do not want to be the one that messes it up. But if you were like, if you're okay at makeup and like, you're, you know, you're pretty good. You, you could probably do like your, your stage makeup, but it's completely different than everyday makeup. Where did you learn to do stage makeup? Honestly, I didn't, I didn't really learn at all. Okay. Um, I looked up YouTube videos. Um, I forgot her name, but I watched like every single video that she had about makeup and stage makeup specifically. And I tried to replicate it as closely as possible. Ooh, it probably looked like a toddler drew on my face. Um, but luckily, one of the girls that I was competing with, uh, who was on my team, um, she ended up, like, helping me and fixing it for me. <laughs> Bless her heart, because I look rough. <laughs> yeah, and it's and it's so nerve. Like, your first show is so nerve-wracking. Just because it's mm-hmm. the first one. Like, I, that's, that is where the adrenaline, you don't know what to expect. And like time wise, you don't know what to expect because every show is different of like when you're going to be on stage. So if you have to worry about doing your own makeup for the very first time and you're not comfortable with it, like just get it done. Same thing with your hair. I always will get my hair done because I know if I do my own hair and I'm not happy with it, I will be so upset. You know what I mean? Yeah, my hair actually looked pretty good and I did that myself, but the, uh, people who were running the show the it was like 125 for makeup 125 for hair and 125 for tan and I just like as a 17 year old like I just I couldn't afford that yeah which again I would have if I would have researched it further um that wouldn't have been a problem <laughs> yeah that's one advice that we can so I I, rem, I remember because I, I kind of knew how much to expect but like if you're thinking about competing take an entire year to train for it and save for it or more Yes, and then, I agree. then go into it and then you'll have some muscle mass and then you can do really competitive, um, when you step on stage. And I think you've talked about your coach and your team, what team are you on and what's your coach's name? My coach's name is Quincy Shockley and I compete with elite. Um, it's just now getting up and running, um, with Cameron Cheek, uh, but I know it's elite. Okay. And um, are you guys an online or in-person coaching? Um, a little bit of both. Mostly online, though. I um, didn't meet her up until in when I did the show, and she came down. Um, but she's offered uh, posing sessions in person and everything like that. Let's talk about posing while we're on that topic. How was your posing <laughs> routine? How was your posing practice? And what was it like getting to learn bodybuilding posing for the first time? Oh my goodness. Luckily, I did not go the cheap route with that one. I hired a posing coach and I my posing probably is the only reason why I place decently because I ugh. <laughs> my posing looked really good though, in my opinion. Um it was totally different when I had first started messaging her and then we first got on a FaceTime and um I didn't even have a posing bikini at the time. I was just in bra and underwear and some funky heels um my back hurt so bad you have to like twist and turn and 
pop this, flex that. I was not prepared. I was in pain. <laughs> yeah. But luckily I, with practice, it gets better. It does. But, okay, so fun story. Like, I remember – I remember distinctly when I like had to learn my posing routine for the first time and like, like your, your, your back, like your back, it wasn't even probably five minutes holding like a back pose and like doing it. And you're like, Oh my God, like I'm going to have to hold this on stage. And it, it's a, it's a little bit of a wake up call because you need like lower back flexibility and like you need like spine flexibility. And I was not a dancer. I had two left feet. I still am not the best dancer, but it's gotten better. Like as you practice, it gets easier, but it's still hard. Like even now my lower back's pretty used to that position, but it's still, if you hit your poses right after a decent posing session, like you're in pain. Yes. I, yep. The one thing I wish I would have done more was I posed every single day going into my show, but I never like held it for a significant amount of time. Yeah. So like once I was up on stage, like my back was like felt like it was about to give out <laughs> it was kind of rough but now I'm kind of now that after my show I've kind of switched on my posting routine and I at the gym like in between sets I hold it a little bit longer I actually smile more um stuff like that yeah yeah that's one thing that I do in my own pros it's like posing planks so like holding a front mm -hmm. pose not just like they're not just doing your routine and then being done it's like hold a front pose for like a minute hold a side pose for a minute, hold a back pose for a minute and like build up the stamina. Like, especially when you're starting a prep, like whenever I start my prep, you're not as, you're not in good shape until like the end of prep. So then you can like hold poses longer as you're more conditioned to. So like at the beginning, when you're first starting off, you should not be able to hold, like you shouldn't be good at posing. You should, no one should, I don't think you should, unless you naturally have it. But as you get more in shape throughout you know, the next 12 to 16 weeks, it should get easier because you're lighter and you don't have as much body fat to kind of like twist and stuff like that. I, yep, I 100% agree. Um, the, yeah, because you never know how long the judges are going to have you in a position, especially when in comparisons. That was, they probably, they had me at least turn around like six, seven times and I was not prepared for that. <laughs> Yeah, because it's, and sometimes, like, at the shows, like, they'll keep you on stage while your whole class does their routines. So there could be, like, 40 yes, girls, um... and you're on stage holding your little back, like, you're just, like, in, in a front pose, like, okay, I still have to hold it in while 40 girls do an individual routine. Yes, that's why I'm preparing myself now, because luckily in the show that I did, there wasn't very many people in my class, like, it was me and five other girls, and by the time okay. we had gone out on stage, they didn't make us, like, pose again until yeah. it was me for the overall. Um, but I didn't have to – like, I didn't wait out on stage very long at a, for a significant amount of time until it was for comparisons, and I was actually, like, posing and turning and back pose and blah, blah, blah. Did you have to travel for your show? I did not. It was in Springfield, so it was only 45 minutes. Okay, well, that's nice. And when you went to your show, um, like on show day, was there anything that happened that you weren't ready for or you didn't anticipate? Um, probably the tan. Um, you have to get butt naked, which I did know going into it. I did know that. I did not realize that the other girls would be sizing me up and looking at me up and down. I was not prepared for that. And you're just kind of standing there in the cactus pose, like – yeah. Butt cold. Yeah. Butt cold. Um, yeah. That I was not prepared for that. But other than that, everything went pretty smooth. Yeah. It is. It is so awkward. I, I, I will never forget hopping into that tent and was like, this isn't private. I'm like, everyone can see everyone. And you're like, oh, I, I've never seen this many like naked people in my life. And everyone's just like casually chatting at the fan like oh cool like how long have you what competition like how you know like little and you're like trying to maintain eye contact so hard and you're like don't look don't look but it's just like it's all exposed yes and the tan lady she's trying to make small talk with me and trying to make me feel more comfortable and I was just not having it I was I was freezing and you could just got to stand there and you can definitely tell who's done it and who hasn't before yeah. 
How do you feel about that color? Oh, the, my hands were green. That was the only thing that really threw me off. Like, my hands were black and green. Yeah, but yeah. other than that, the tan, I knew it was going to be dark. Yeah. Um, my mom almost didn't recognize me, I don't think. <laughs> but it, it, I actually kind of liked being that dark. I, uh, it's, I'm, no, that sounds kind of weird, but, like, yeah. it was nice to see the muscle definition pop. That's what I meant. <laughs> I know what you mean. I know what you mean, yeah, because whenever you put that coat of tan, you're like, oh, there it is. There it is. And, like, oh, yeah, all the shreds are coming out. And you're like, ooh, I didn't know I looked like this. Body dysmorphia, gone. <laughs> yeah. You throw on some nice tan and everyone is like, oh, you look perfect now. Yes. And the glaze, oh, my goodness. That was probably... That was a really good final touch, like, to make me realize, like, this is what my body looks like, and this is where I have the potential to go when I actually put in the work to do something, yeah. which is why I'm so excited to get on back on stage. Um, it, but I'm mean, taking my off season. I need to grow definitely my glutes. I definitely need to grow my glutes um, and my legs a little bit more. So on show day, how did it go? Like, right before you're about to go on stage, did you have stage fright? I was so nervous to get on stage, which I wasn't nervous to get on stage for the stage itself. I was nervous because I was going out there by myself because I was in a teen division. So I was the only one in my division. Um, so first time you're ever on a stage for a bikini, they sent me out by myself. I was so nervous. Um, but after that, I was completely fine. Um, yeah. I was actually like so excited to get on stage and chatting with the other girls backstage. They were like, you act like you've done this a million times. And I'm like, you should have seen me this morning. I look terrified. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Like that is, I mean, everyone, it still happens to me, like right before you're about to go on, like the butterflies of like, okay, here we go. Here we go. It's just like so much anticipation leading up to it because you spend so much time preparing in the gym and the diet that you just want it to go well. Yes. And for the such short amount of time, you're actually on stage it's it's incredible you're like wow I just put in 18 20 weeks for a few minutes on stage but all those few minutes mean everything yeah like you can't see anything else but the judges and like some judges kind of looked like not impressed of course but then those you have those judges that are like wow like they can appreciate your hard work and it's like yes that's what I'm doing I know. yay <laughs> I know like I'm I, I try I really try not to like think about anything but I'm like looking at the judges and like not trying to overthink it but I want them to like look at me and so I'm like scanning their eyes and I'm like was that a smile or was that a smirk are they making fun of me I don't know am I doing good am I doing bad because some of them are trained to be stoic and not try to show emotions mm -hmm. so they don't kind of give anyone an idea of like who they're favoriting um but sometimes they can't help it and you can you can see them like you can see them talking to each other about your physique which is like you're they're judging it right there and they're like okay this this and they're pointing and they're chatting and you can't hear what they're saying but all you see is like this and nodding yes or, I, or this yes. and like this little <laughs> conversation so like I wish I wish I could hear what they were saying yes when I went out there for my teen division they didn't really look at me if I'm being honest because I was the only one in it yeah. um they kind of glanced at me and that was about it but when I went out for my novice division that was when they actually looked at me and I could tell that they were like oh wow she's 17 and out here like winning this thing <laughs> that's kind of cool um which made me feel so good like it's hard to like stay composed on stage when you do get that like slight glimpse of anything other than just emotionless yeah how did you end up placing i ended up placing first in my novice class first in teen obviously and then second overall oh nice okay i like that um let me see so you said you competed against five girls and then how many classes were there in the overall? Um, in the overall, um, I like, was there like A, B, C, it was such, D? Oh, no, 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 no. It was a really, really small show. Okay. Okay. And then was this the NPC? If I'm being honest, I think, mm -hmm. it was, NPC. it was Pink Muscle Fest. Okay. And what is your plan for next time? Like, when are you going to be back on stage? 
my plan for being back on stage is spring 2023. So oh. about a year. That's... I want to take a really good off season and yeah. improve because I want to do well next time. Like I want to be unforgettable. I want to be, wow, she went from that to that. Wow. Like I'm going to impress those judges. And if I need to take time off, that's just what I need to do. Yeah. Um, I was supposed to do a second show, but um, I pulled just because I wasn't really getting any leaner. I was going to look the same and to spend that kind of money just to look the same, in my opinion, wasn't worth it. Yeah. If I can just take the time off, actually get a physique that I'm proud of. And I was proud of my first physique, but to improve on um, and just bring back a package that I was super proud of and just wow factor yeah I agree with you too like time time is what you need unfortunately like I wish it was fast to build muscle I wish it was a lot faster than it actually is but that that's gonna be good I'm excited to see what happens when you come back because I'm sure you're getting some nice newbie gains right now and you're probably building like pretty fast as well yeah I had a decent muscle mass going into it just because I do build muscle pretty fast and I had gone to the gym previously like well before my prep so I had already kind of progressed and then plateaued and then I honestly lost a little bit of muscle mass going into my prep which I think everybody does at least a little bit um so I'm just eating a lot more (laughs) and putting on that muscle or trying to praying to the glute gods over here yeah So what did you start your prep at? Like, how much weight did you end up losing during your prep, and how long did it take? I started my prep at the beginning of July, and I weighed 130 pounds, um, competed October 16th, and my stage weight was 120. So was that? that's still what I, 10 pounds. 10 pounds, okay. That's about about what's pretty accurate, too. And were you happy with, like, your Mm -hmm. physique on show day? Um, I was really hard on myself. Um, I also had a lot, a lot of a negativity going into my show. A lot of people telling me that I wasn't lean enough, that I shouldn't be stepping on the stage, that I'm too young to be doing it. And I still did it anyway because it was something I wanted to do. Um, but if I'm being completely honest, I wasn't happy going on stage with my physique. I just thought I was going to be super, super, super lean. But I also had this unrealistic expectation of what my body was going to look like because I had compared myself to these figure pros or not figure pros, but like these pros who, if we're being honest, probably aren't 100 percent natural, Um, which is something I also wish I would have realized sooner. Yeah, I did (laughs) the same thing too. Like it's it's a lot because like you you're working so hard that I don't maybe at the end of the, the day you you're not sure what's what's gonna happen like when you're on stage you don't know what your final form is gonna look like so the entire time when you're training and you're just like working so hard and dieting so hard for the first time and you see like Olympians and pros you kind of expect to look like how they look on stage but then you get on stage and you're like oh well I look like me but like lean (laughs) like it's it's so it's so hard to build that muscle mass you're like oh I see I see now like oh I see where I can make improvements because when you kind of shed the body fat you're like that's what's left those are my muscles as they are and I'm like oh okay like I need to bring that up and bring that down and you're finally like oh okay this is gonna take me a lot longer than I had thought yes and that's also why I'm taking my giant off season which honestly I don't think it's that long of an off season Um, but I am taking it pretty seriously. I'm sticking to my meal plan as close to, to it as I can. Um, and just following my workout regimen, all that, drinking my water, taking my supplements, all that. But I didn't fully realize it until I had gotten almost to stage that I was like, oh, this is what being a natural athlete looks like. And this is what a natural athlete looks like. and I think it's something that isn't completely talked about enough yeah uh, in the sport it's not it's really not because like it's there's a certain point genetically some people like Ashley Kay like she had abs forever like I don't remember seeing her without abs and being in shape 
And then there's some people, like, I feel like myself, like, I was an average-looking person. Like, I just looked, like, skinny fat. Like, I never had muscle tone. I did some sports, but I wasn't genetically gifted with, like, really big muscles. So I've had to, like, really work hard for, like, four four years now going on to five years. And it's, like, <laughs> we're getting closer to that, like, pro-level physique. We're getting closer, but it's still – it's such a progress just to, like, do these little – each year you come back with a little bit more muscle, a little bit more, a little bit, like you get a little leaner, you get a little more, um, and you just can keep going as best as you can. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see my physique next year for yeah. sure, because I have a more, I know what my body looks like lean, so uh -huh. I'm not going to be <clears throat> reaching for these unattainable images in my head, like. I work out hard. I am following my diet. I am doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing, yeah. but I don't look like these Olympians. <laughs> yeah. Yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet, but I will be getting there. I'm committed to it. <laughs> so I did you struggle along the way with sticking to your diet or missing out on social events or anything like that? Um, sticking to my diet was pretty hard. Um, if anything, I the workouts are easy. Not easy, like they're challenging, but if we're talking in terms of mental toughness, diet definitely got to me. Yeah. Um, just because I had only been tracking macros for a short amount of time and I was used to just being able to eat whatever I wanted as long as it fit my macros and not just sticking to, hey, you can only eat chicken, rice, and broccoli. You can only eat these foods. So sticking to that was difficult um there at the end um like i said i developed a really toxic mindset going into it, it and almost developed a borderline eating disorder because of it um again that was totally on me um i have a better view of it now looking back on it like i've learned from my mistakes i've learned like calories in calories out type situation um but i have a way better relationship with food than i did going into it so when you when you say that you almost had an eating disorder what did that mean was that with like your relationship of how you saw food or how you saw yourself um like I said I had a really unattainable image of what I thought my body was going to look like um and my coach being the great coach that she is um you know she was very careful with my food and how low my calories got and my low calories did get pretty low um and cardio being pretty high but I was like in my head I was like okay well to look at this, uh, this certain way I need to just eat less because caloric deficit um so I almost I almost struggled with bulimia if I'm being honest yeah. or just throwing up my food yeah um not binging not the binging part but um that was that was really rough um yeah it could have caused a lot of damage going into it but luckily I had pulled myself out of that mindset because like that's not healthy at all whatsoever um yeah you can't like preach that this is a great sport but then behind closed doors be totally toxic to yourself like that's just that's not healthy so well, thank you for being honest and sharing because that can definitely help some athletes or some girls that are thinking about getting into this because I know um, I never had when I was in high school, I never had an eating disorder. I don't I don't I don't remember that I had a weird relationship with food. It was always I ate whatever I wanted. I didn't necessarily eat super unhealthy and I didn't necessarily eat like super healthy. I just kind of like ate when I was hungry, stopped when I was full, like how more, most people around the world are supposed to. Uh, when I first started, I was super strict and I was on macros and my first prep, it was like everything was exactly calculated to the plan and I never, ever would cheat on my diet. And then I started to get a little bit burnt out during my prep that I prepped for an entire year um, in 2020. And towards the end of the prep, I shouldn't have been prepping. I just need, like, I needed a mental break from just from the strictness of the food. It was like, I was on a meal plan, but I was just like, 
I wanted some flavor. Like it, that's really all it was. Like I wanted a little variety. I wanted flavor. And um, there was moments after my show where I just binge ate so hard. And it's not even that I wanted to. It just was like my brain needed this like reset of like I just need to eat food that tastes good and like enjoy it and actually put time into prepping my meals because I would be lazy with my meal preps because I would have no energy and it was like this cycle. And so that's what I've really focused on this off season is like improving that relationship with food and like making things that even if it takes a little bit longer, just like spending a little bit more time to like make it taste good, eat, like make it fit my meal plan, but make it taste good. So it's sustainable for a long time because you know, if it's not, if you're not doing something in your prep that you can't sustain, even in your off season, it's not going to work long term. I'm so glad that you said that. I wish that I would have had those like words of wisdom, like going into my prep because yeah. I developed some really toxic traits that I wish more people were just upfront about, yeah. um, which is why I am so open and honest about it because I feel like more people struggle with it than they would like to admit. So yeah. if I can help somebody, that's my goal. Yeah. I mean, there's times like in I've prepped, I haven't been a hundred percent perfect on my plan. Like there might've been a day where I had an off day or I might've tried a bite of food. Like it happens just behind closed doors. And not a lot of people are willing to like admit they're just, they, you know, they, I was perfect. I was perfect. And they create this, you know, I was a hundred percent perfect the entire time and I never slip up. And sometimes it happens and you like life happens and stress happens and you're, I mean, traveling and all sorts of things that could happen in a prep. And sometimes like, you know, you might not get, be able to get to the gym because your car breaks down or whatever is going on or something happens or the gym's closed or you're, I don't know. There's like a hundred reasons that, you know, your prep is never expect it to be perfect. And same thing with your off season. Don't expect it to be perfect either. And changing from off season to prep, like your standards should change too. I think that was really hard for me at the beginning of my off season. So has there been any struggle points for you from going into a prep to going into your first off season? Honestly, no. Um, I pulled out two weeks before my show second show or what should have been my second show because pretty similar to what you said I just needed that break um I was getting so hard on myself so such a toxic mindset that I'm like okay if I want to actually do this I need to do it right and I need to actually take a step back and realize for myself that I can't do this if I'm going to continue having this mindset yeah. Um, I need to actually enjoy the foods that I'm eating and I did like the foods that I was eating but like you said it preps are expected to be perfect but I sure as heck was not perfect <laughs> um I'd never straight up binged or anything like that but I did have a few bites of food here and there you know um but for the most part I was pretty decent but stepping into my off season um the first morning that I was that I was told I could could have like eggs and cream of rice I was like wow okay <laughs> awesome I love this yeah it's like the little things I feel like it prep makes you appreciate food a lot more in a weird way and like going out to eat is actually a pretty big deal so it always feels more special now yes but going out to eat I don't really go out to eat that often like I don't like, I look forward to the occasions that I'm invited to, but I don't really necessarily make those occasions for myself. Yeah. Or, like, it make those occasions purposefully with the intent of going out to eat. Just because, like, I know the foods that I'm eating fuel my body. Like, yeah, that's just how it is in my life. I agree with you, too. I, I will never be like, I want to take out. Like, I want to go get takeout, like, for no reason. That has, I'm like, what is the point? Like, why would you just randomly pick, like, a Wednesday and be like, let's go get a meal out like that doesn't I'm like I have my meals prepped at home in the fridge I'm not trying to waste that food and I know that it's going to work in my macros it's going to fit my meal plan so I always prefer for myself to make it but eventually like going out to eat with someone else always for an event or with someone so they can share that moment with you 
Yes, I agree. I won't pass up those events now um, because I realize that the memories are more important than the food. Um, it was really hard for me to understand that during prep, um, but I'm glad I have the mindset that I do now. Like it's yeah. the people that you hang out with are more important than the food that you're consuming. Yeah. But again, I still enjoy the food that I eat now. <laughs> How did your um, friends and I think, family react to this diet change? Um, my mom was pretty hesitant. She supported me 100%, but she was pretty hesitant going into it. Um, she was like, I don't know about this. You're, you're pretty skinny. Um, like 130 pound, five, four female. That's not overweight. It's not, it's pretty average, yeah. but kind of like on the lower side. Mm-hmm. Um, so she was kind of hesitant about that, but everybody else for the most part of my life was pretty supportive. Um, it just near the end, that's when it kind of showed me who really supported me and who didn't when the, when that negativity did come around, I was like, Oh, so you're trying to be in my corner, but also like, yeah, (laughs) it's very odd. The behavior of others, when you decide to do a show of like how like little comments and that you just kind of get taken back of like, I would never say anything about, you know, your exercise routine and, and your life choices. And honestly, I don't care what anyone else eats or exercise or not exercise. And I don't judge anyone for not exercising or not eating healthy. I don't care. But the little, little comments are just kind of interesting because I feel like there is a negative perspective like perception of like why someone would do a bikini bodybuilding show and they're not, if they're not doing it themselves, they don't fully understand what it is and like what it feels like to do it. Yes. Um, It also like when people try and justify their food options, um, I'm like, don't judge me. I won't judge you. I don't care if you're eating a cheeseburger. Just let me eat my chicken and rice alone. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's so weird. It's like, they'll always say things like, oh, you know, oh, you're just gonna have that. Like, how do you like that? Like, it's so like, don't you get tired of it? Or, um, oh, you know, like, I'm starting a diet next week, or, you know, this is my cheat day, and they're like eating something. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. Thanks for sharing that information. I'm like, I don't care. It like, I don't care. Like, I don't ever ask for someone's like, what's your macros? <laughs> but I feel like people are so interested in like our cardio and diet. Like they just somehow are, I guess it's a, it's a window for them to ask whatever questions they feel like. Yes. But at the same time, it's, it's also such a vulnerable part in your life that I think some people kind of take advantage of that and kind of use that because you are so tired and so energy depleted they kind of use that as a weakness against you or that's kind of how it happened in my situation. Um, Yeah. I prep shouldn't be an excuse to treat people poorly, but I also think that it should also be replicated back. Like uh, just because you don't decide to live a crazy healthy lifestyle or because you don't decide to do what I do. I don't think that should give you a reason to be negative to me because you don't necessarily agree with it. Yeah, I I agree fully. Like whatever people want to do or don't don't judge me for making the decision to better my life and I think prep does that at the end of the day. There's certain points of it closer to the end where it does cross that like here's the healthy line. It's an imaginary healthy line and then here's your entire off season and then like the first couple of weeks of prep and then to get like stage lane, you just kind of like, oh, we're going to just like go over here for a couple of weeks and then you go right back. So it's only like a couple of weeks where you're doing extremely low calories, extremely high cardio, where it's kind of like, okay, that's excessive. That's almost too much cardio and that's almost too low of calories. But then, you know, for the rest of the entire year, you're, you're eating in a surplus, you're eating lots of food, you're eating all the time, you're drinking tons of water you're having all these great vitamins and nutrients that you're taking, you're having like, not a, not a ton of cardio. So it, it does, it does kind of walk that line to actually get on stage, but stage isn't every single day. It's only one day. Yes, it definitely gets, it's an extreme sport. So 
you have to go to those extremes to be competitive with it. Um, I think that's just a risk that you have to accept if you actually want to do it or not. Yeah. Um, which is something, obviously, if you compete, that's just is part of it. It's what you do. Yeah, that's a, it's, a, it's a kind of the harsh reality is that it is going to be hard and a prep shouldn't be easy because otherwise everyone would do it. Yes, but I also don't think it's this crazy unattainable thing to compete. Yeah. As long as you're self-disciplined enough and you're committed enough to it, you can do it. It's not this crazy thing only one in 200 people can do. Yeah. Anybody, or maybe not, not necessarily anybody, but if the right person is committed enough to do it, you can do it. I agree too. Like it's, it's not that hard until it gets hard and and it's progressive so you don't just start and you just don't do seven days a week of training and and two hours of cardio that's it's a progressive thing so you slowly like drop you start your calories here you start your cardio here and each week you kind of like slowly drop your calories while you increase your cardio and eventually at a certain point of prep it switches and that's when it gets hard like the last four to six weeks when you're like tired, you don't have a lot of calories and then your cardio, that's kind of when it gets a little bit challenging because the beginning of your prep, you're full of carbs, you're full of energy, life is good. And then you start to get the hangry, hungry feeling and you're like, oh, okay, this is where it's getting real. But I do think anyone can do it if they want to. And I do wish everyone would do one prep in their entire life, like to really understand what dieting and exercise can do and how you need to be disciplined to see results. Yes, because I feel like I have a pretty good standpoint on self-discipline. Um, dis disciplinism? Discipline? <laughs> Just because I have consistently done events and things that I have to be consistent with um, and self-discipline to do. So I 100% agree that I think it's a good life lesson to learn and have. Yeah. Um, because honestly, now that I've gone through this prep, I'm like, wow. So I can really do anything I want to do. I can, as long as I just put my mind to it. And after 18 weeks of extreme dieting, I feel like I can do anything. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. It really does show you like, it's a, it's a, it's a weird, it's, unless you do it, you don't understand it. But like, once you do it, you're like, okay, wow, I worked so hard and for this many weeks and I, I achieved this goal of getting on stage. Now imagine, you know, if I set another goal and I just work really hard at it a little bit every single day for long periods of time, then you can get to it. And I think that's what the best thing the bodybuilding does is it teaches you how to goal set, how to say self-disciplined in order to get to your goals. And then you can start applying that to other aspects of your life. Yes, it definitely teaches progression, that's for sure. Um, yeah. What else has it taught you? Honestly, it has taught me so much about myself. Um, as far as, like, mental toughness, that is probably the biggest key takeaway. That, like, in those – because nobody is there holding your hand through it unless you're prepping with somebody else. But at the end of the day, for most of us, you're just – it's you and yourself on that cardio machine. Like, nobody's there to hold your hand. Mm -hmm. You have your coach, but they can only – they give you the directions. You just have to uh, execute it. So when it comes to execution and you're there holding your own hand and pushing yourself through those moments, through those extremely hard moments, it really teaches you, wow, like, you're your biggest cheerleader, and that's how it's always going to be. Like, you can't expect somebody else to put in the work for you. Um I honestly learned how to be nicer to myself and give myself more grace in those moments because I do put in so much work. I make myself commit to these things because I want to accomplish these goals that I have. Um, so, yeah. What is your goals in the sport? Within the sport, um, I definitely want to make it to the Olympia one day. <laughs> um, I feel like that's a long-term goal everybody has when they compete. Yep. Um, honestly, I really want to get – go to nationals and get my pro card. That's probably like, I feel like every bodybuilder has that goal, but um, I just want to be like, once I get that pro card, I, I feel like it would just be like, wow, 
I started at 17 years old because I committed myself to this. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would just be the biggest accomplishment ever. Yeah. Outside of bodybuilding, what do you do for fun? Ooh, um, I really like to bake, which is kind of ironic considering I'm such a like a meal plan oriented person. Um, but I really enjoy baking. Um, I kind of like crafting, sewing, stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, I really, I really do enjoy going going to the gym. Um, for not necessarily for fun, but I do really enjoy doing it. Um, teaching younger kids um more fitness like how to squat properly how to kettlebell swing properly basics about olympic lifting stuff like that i it makes my day watching that kid's face when it finally clicks um nothing makes my day more i absolutely absolutely love it what grade are you in i am technically a senior but i since i'm online school i had already graduated and i'm taking college classes right now Okay, what are you going to college for? Not sure yet. Um, I think I'm going to go for nutrition, but right now I'm just trying to get my prereqs done. <laughs> okay. Well, okay, yeah, I mean, you have a lot of different things to learn in the next next couple of years. I feel like such an old lady. <laughs> um, I'm only 25, <laughs> but um, prepping ages you. Do you feel like that you've aged during this process? Um. Uh, I feel like I have become a more wise person, but not necessarily aged. I feel like yeah. I've always been kind of an old soul. Like, that's that sounds, like, so weird, like, saying myself, but I've just been told by multiple people, like, you don't act like you're 17. So, if anything, it doesn't really feel out of the norm. I just feel like I've taken a lot of life lessons from it. Yeah, I agree. Like, I don't think prepping necessarily ages you, but it gives you lots of insight and lots of wisdom really fast that you – don't a lot of people probably in their whole lifetime will never experience it because a lot of people aren't they don't like prep gives you so much like it just it, it it sucks but it gives you this new possibility of like once you do something you didn't think you could do it just like then you keep doing it and it starts to build this inner like self belief and self-confidence that is just it's undescribable but it's one of the most addicting things um it's that's why I keep doing it because I, I love it so much and yes the diet is hard yes the cardio is hard yes it's expensive and not everyone understands and sometimes you can feel alone at times because you know you're not you're not drinking you're not eating the meals you're not out to restaurants you're getting enough sleep you're going to bed early or getting up early but at the end of the day like it's so much fun like it's really it's a really really fun sport and I'm glad that you found it and I'm glad you found me and I'm glad you listened to the podcast. And um, is there any final words that you would like to share with others, whether they're new competitors that are thinking about getting into competing or maybe they're 17 year olds that are just like you that are just started off any <laughs> advice, final words. Um, my final advice would probably be to make sure that you are well with yourself. Make sure you are very mentally aware with yourself um before you start a prep um because prep will bring out those insecurities and whether those insecurities make you a better person or destroy you that's kind of up to you but i definitely think that's probably my biggest piece of advice is to make sure you're just well you sit well with yourself yeah was there anything i didn't ask you about that you wanted to talk about um I don't think so. I think we covered everything. Okay. Well, the last final question is, are you team cupcake? Or are you team protein shake? Cupcakes all the way. And then if you were a cupcake, describe what flavor you would be and why. Mm, that was a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> Probably red velvet. <laughs> um, red velvet with cream cheese frosting. Um, I feel like it's just such a staple piece, but it can, if it's made right, it can be perfect. I feel like same thing could be said, like, with competing. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on to the show. And then if um, our listeners want to tag you on Instagram, uh, where can they find you? Yeah, so I'm definitely most active on Instagram. Uh, my handle is Lydia period lifty. 
or Lydia.Lifty. It's okay. pretty plain and simple. Well, thanks for coming on the show and good luck. And if uh, we could always do a return episode, I'm curious to see how your off season goes and um, let me know if you need anything. I, I love helping new competitors with suits as well um, and jewelry. If you ever need advice, um, I'm, I feel like I'm a pro amateur at this point. <laughs> like I've been, I've been an amateur for so for so long that I have lots of wisdom. Um, and thanks for coming on the show. If you guys are listening to this, hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And I 